some strange reason, a lot of these financial buildings are like, in a way, built for skating. You know, all these, you know, nice marble ledges and handrails and stairs and all these things. So. Nothing is humdrum in this relatively small spot on the East Coast. Ever new, New York changes and grows. Almost six and a half million square feet of office space will spring up in a single busy year. Modern castles of business and industry. New York City pioneered the first zoning resolution that was comprehensive in application in 1916. It was a revolutionary document at the time, and it, among other things, controlled uh, effectively the heights of buildings in the city. Over the succeeding decades, lots of skyscrapers were built under that zoning resolution. But for a variety of reasons, the city realized post-World War II that it should rethink the kind of zoning controls that it had for its large office and residential buildings. And one of the innovations that was introduced was a small little element known as incentive zoning, in which developers who agreed to provide plazas would be encouraged to do so because they would be allowed to build a slightly larger building. That was the birth of this now enormously influential program of law that has sculpted the streetscape of New York City. What New York skaters had at their disposal was a city like no other in America, a dense metropolis full of modern architecture that included a specific type of public space vital to the evolution of skating, the plaza. Ramps were out. The artifacts of the urban landscape were in. Curbs, benches, railings, steps, embankments. It was like skaters had a mole in the city planning office. You know, and there's plazas everywhere. We had endless terrain. We had stairs, banks, handrails. I mean, we would push from the banks to Midtown, no problem, and hit thousands of spots on the way. And the security guards didn't even know what to do. So it was, it was open game everywhere. It was just like plazas for days. New York City is a, the, a perfect example of people who don't skateboard building something and then skateboarders using it to, you know, do their thing. It's kind of a flukish relationship. Much to skate, and you gotta remember, New York is a growing city. They fucking building, building after building after building after building. There was all kinds of new shit through the late 80s and early 90s. Ledges, stairs with ledges, embankments, railings. There was no, let's jump in a car and let's go to a spot. All we had was a token and our skateboard. You know, you just utilize everything that's in the city, like for yourself, it's our like uh, huge playground that we have. fuck with what you did, what stocks you stole. We want to skate the ledge. We don't care about whatever you're doing, what you're doing in your office. This is what we care about, you know? And not getting caught by a security guard. When I started to study public spaces in New York City, uh, I didn't think of skateboarding or other kinds of activities that might take place in the spaces. But in the course of my early 
visits, I suddenly came across uh, activities that I hadn't anticipated being there. And in one of them, I came across a whole bunch of skateboarders. And I realized that uh, these spaces could accommodate uh, an even wider range of activities than I had thought.